some of you will recognize this, right? Yeah. Um, it, means, it means two things to, it means different things to different people. For some people, this is how you come in, right? Uh, so for those who didn't attend this university, you probably noticed this road on your way in. But for those of us who finished from Ife, uh, this was something you didn't want to hear in your year one or any other time. It's road one. All right? And by chance, is there anyone here, obviously a guy, not a lady, who stayed in a room that has this name? Where? H8. That's an amazing room. <laughs> All right. Let me tell you a little story about H8 Angola Oil. Sunday, October 13, 1995. You never forget some things. I got to the gate at Ife, and this is a major lesson. Okay, in primary school, secondary school, the distance between the school gate and the school was pretty short. So then I got to Ife, and here was I telling the guy who was driving. Now I had four big bags. There was a time in my life when I used to I used to cook everything and anything. So I had a big bag of pots, different things, and so I told the guy at the gate, "Stop! This is where I'm going." And you know the, the gentleman was trying to explain to me, you're not quite there yet, but I was thinking to myself, you, <laughs> what do you know? I am a, a graduate to be. I have just gained admission. What do you know? So I got there and I stopped. And thankfully, as nature does, always does, it began to rain. And there I was, and the security guards, you know, I saw them when I was coming in today, and I was, you know, I did this inside me, like, thank you guys, because they saved the day. You know how someone is telling you, you're not yet there, and you're trying to argue. I'm a very stubborn person, by the way. I'm a very stubborn person. So I was arguing with them, and so the security guards were like, no, you're not there yet. That this road goes all the way. Then you get to Odudua all area, then you turn left, and then you see Fadji, you all, then you turn right, and I was like, what is this? Now, one lesson I learned on that day. When you bring old knowledge to a new environment, you will embarrass yourself. You will embarrass yourself. And this is one of the reasons why I believe that education is something we need to consistently tell ourselves that it's about learning and continuous learning. Now, that was my first lesson, and I'm going somewhere. First week, I got into IFA. Did anybody ever stay at self-help? Good. That was my first stop. Um, in the room, I had bio, I had dio, all my friends were there. And it was very comfortable. You know, we were very comfortable. Very comfortable. But a few weeks later, no thanks to some kind of arrangement I still don't understand, I was told I needed to change rooms to H8 Angola Hall. Now, I was mad. Now, do you know how you feel when people are taken away from their friends? It was my comfort zone. I mean, I knew Dio. I knew Bio. Anybody who came there was the enemy. We were friends. But here was I taken into a new zone, H8 Angola all Different people. First of all, there were supposed to be eight of us in the room. Right? Um, so I got into my corner, and I noticed that there were a few bags in the corner. Okay? Anybody who stayed, I think this applies actually to any university in Nigeria. Okay? You get into the room, and eight becomes 18. Um, <laughs> and we had talent in the room. So, the second lesson was this. Leave your comfort zone. I don't, know, I don't know what the comfort zone is, but this is the idea. We're here at TED, we're talking about creating, we're talking about change, but change is never comfortable. Never. Anybody who tells you change is comfortable is deceiving you. One of the reasons why things may continue the way they are in Nigeria is because we don't want to leave our comfort zones, including those who feel they're being... Things have been stolen from them and those who are busy stealing. You know, especially those who are busy stealing. Who wants to change that kind of comfort zone? <laughs> and by the way, we got to H.O. and Angola, and we had amazing talent. So we had guys who could sing heaven to earth. But we had a guy, by the way, who could sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I won't mention his name. He started from agricultural science and then eventually moved on to medicine graduated is one of the finest doctors I know today. By the way, don't judge anyone, you know, because of their habits. I almost mentioned his name right now. <laughs> he could sleep. And, you know, we would time him. And this was fun. We would time him. And one of those days, Edgar... Okay. Oh. Let me... 
I got him 13 hours, and so we gave him the award. You know, the guy, and you know, there was a guy who could cook, he could cook up a storm. You know, and his corner was, of course, the first one. When you, you know, when you get into the room on the left, so you can be sure that many of us stopped over to test a few things. Uh, this was us, you know, the group of a few of us who, you know, took this picture. You probably know Ezekiah Olua Somi, right? Okay, you know him. He's always standing in the background. Um, <laughs> I don't know why he loves that. Okay. Who do you think that is? Come on. That can't be me. Smiling. And the smile is still there. All right. But I'll, I'll, stop, I'll stop at that point for a bit. And I'll talk about three very quick things. What, you know, what we're here to discuss. Create. One major lesson I learned in H8 is the power of adaptation. I remember many times when the who was squatting who became a problem. We didn't know who owned the bed officially and who was the squatter, who was just leaning on the person. But one of the things we learned to do was to adapt. Now, this is where many Nigerians are experts. There's power failure. You bring in a generator. The generator doesn't work well. You kind of get a backup one, which is called an inverter. The inverter doesn't work well. I don't know what we're going to create next. But I'm beginning to see the rechargeable lamps, the solar, the solar fans. Because, I mean, that's probably what you need the most. Because uh, many of us, if you're one of those people who are lucky enough to have very nice neighbors who have those really lovely generators that love to announce when they come on that, yes, I'm on, and all that. But then, if there's a problem, what do you do? You create a solution. And that, I think, is one of the critical things we need to talk about here. What am I focusing on today? One key problem. I call this CPF. Cram, pass, forget. One of the biggest problems we have in Nigeria today is unemployment. I mean, the, the official numbers are terrible. But be, don't let anyone fool you. The official numbers are not the real numbers. But one of the reasons why that would happen, why that would keep happening, is because of this problem. We cram, we pass, we forget, and suddenly you're in the final year. And you realize, oh my God, I need to graduate, I need to get a CV, and all that. Okay, which is one of the reasons we've created a new program, and uh, it's called TEN, Techie Entrepreneurial Nigerian Talented. And the idea is it's focused on young people, such that you don't get any sudden surprises. You've seen this picture, right? This, I, I don't even need to ask you, you already know this picture. This was a test, a bank test that was being written. I understand that the crowd was dispersed because, you know, it was too confusing. But don't let this picture fool you. There's a worse one. 60,000 people, National Stadium, Surulere, writing tests on their lap to get employment into a government agency. The sad part is they paid to write that test. I don't think they would have selected 10 people. Of course, they would use the money. Now, we said at tent, and the idea of tent is basically to work with young people who are still in school, who may even be out of school, but who have awesome tech ideas. The interesting thing is that we're so great in terms of being users in Nigeria. Now, RIM, the Blackberry makers are having problem. You know, they're having a big problem everywhere else in the world, but guess where? Except Nigeria. The numbers are going really up. And you can tell, Blackberry Babes 1, Blackberry Babes 2, there will soon be the return of the Blackberry Babes, <laughs> the Blackberry Dudes, and all that. We're users. One of the things we began to notice was, yes, we are, we are real consumers. It's the reason why we're defined, we're defined as consumers. Well, we want to begin to see young people who will begin to create of course, it will start with copying. And there's nothing wrong with copying. The best of guys you've seen have copied. I can see a few guys in the room who, were, who copied and got good at it. I won't mention names. So what we did was to redefine this project for Ife. Guinea pig, if you allow me to use that phrase. Work with students. And the idea is it's a five-year process. Now, this is something that may fail. I'm not scared of failure. I failed leaving the school with a second class lower and an extra semester. But if you like, quote that anywhere right now. We'll see who will laugh. I don't, I'm not scared of failure. If this fails, fine. We'll learn in another way. But the idea is from year one to year five, we'd like to see students in their first year. You know how we do. You get to your final year. You have to write a final year project. And I understand that many people still get handed out topics by supervisors. 
that's the reason we're where we are. Because we all end up creating people who will stay on cues, like the one we saw. Okay? Talking about change. It's a five-year experiment. In year one, by the way, that year one, the year, current year one of computer science and engineering students, uh, we just we had a meeting earlier. I had a meeting earlier today with the HOD, uh, met the dean of computer science and engineering and tech. And on Monday, April 30, we will start with orientation. All part one computer science students have been invited. Work with them for five years, and the idea is in their year one, every one of them will be told, choose a project topic you want to work with. We're tired of CVs. We don't want to see CVs when you graduate. We want to see business plans. All businesses fail in IFE and become a big business outside. Every company that we admire today, the ones that are bought for $1 billion, the reason they've been able to do that is because they experimented. So experiment. Don't be scared of failing. You're still a student anyway. So by, your, by, by the third year, they begin to hook up with partners in different departments. Yes, we're starting with just one department because we can't, of course, when we started the idea and uh, I spoke with the computer science department, uh, that, that had some bit of issues, by the way, because I finished from electronic and electrical engineering department. But so the university got back and said, no, we won't do this with just you and one department. It will be the entire school. It's okay. You can start with computer science department because in the next few years, what we want to see is a set of young people who will leave the school having employed some of their colleagues and friends and will go all out to make the world understand what exactly technology means. Technology is not using a Blackberry. Technology is not having the largest number of followers on Twitter. I'm not bossing any bubble. That's reality. Technology is creating something that others will use and will not be worried about paying you for it. And guess what? You've got a big market. Earlier today, uh, of course, I didn't know they were going to do that. I met with two different groups who showed me two different ideas. The first group, they're already working on Computer literacy in Yoruba. I found that interesting simply because, I, you know, I, I, that was something I, I worked with a, f a few years ago. Now they're creating a product around that, and they know their market. The second group was quite interesting. Two students of medicine in their fifth year created Efico.net. Course content from their own department and from dentistry for students to get access to. You know, there are quite a few of us who are not exactly experts at making every lecture, okay? Uh, we're not wired that way. We kind of love our time to ourselves. Once in a while, you don't want to meet the angel of chemistry at 6.30 a.m. at Ajoste. Why in the world do I have to meet the angel at 6.30? Now, that's coded language for anyone who went through this. If you didn't, that's uh, go and find out. So the MOU is signed, we're ready to take off. I said this, this is an experiment. But one of the things I've learned about experiments, in 2007, I walked out of paid employment and took a quick leap, you know, to do an experiment somewhere where everybody knows. It's called Ajegunle, okay? And the idea was very simple. You know, one of those things that happen to you when you're coming back into Nigeria on a flight and an idea just hits you, 37,000, you know, <laughs> feet above sea level and you begin to ride on whatever you can find and then you get home and you're so passionate and you, you, let's try this thing out. Maybe it work, maybe it won't work. Four years later, I kind of think it's working. You know why I say that? Yesterday, a friend walked up to me at a meeting and said, oh, my God, your project is working. I was, what are you talking about? said, you know, he went to make this presentation at this, as far as it was concerned, big organization. It's a, it's a dipl diplomatic organization. And then during the meeting, Someone introduced herself and said, my name is so-so-and-so. I'm a product of ajigunle.org. And uh, the man you mentioned his name as your colleague and friend was the one who trained us. Another person talked about going to a company. He met someone, he thought, and they had a conversation. And then he mentioned the word ajigunle. And the guy was thinking to himself, I mean, come on. And a lot of the guys who think these things about this location haven't even been there. That's reality. I remember many times when I ask everyone I meet, I like, come to Ajegunle. And they're like, ah, Binga, are you sure it's safe and all that? And then when they eventually get there, everything changes. Famous story is interesting. And I've told the story over and over again. I should be sued if I tell this story one more time. 
Famous went through the training, got an internship because he knew how to use Excel. Come on, Excel. I think everybody uses Excel. But he could do data entry. He got the internship. And then there was a job you know, opening in Abuja, the UK High Commission in Abuja. And, you know, my you know, mentor advice, uh, famous, you want to be careful? Uh, don't over-expect because, you know, you don't have a degree yet. And a lot of people who have degrees are applying for the same job. But famous mind was made up, applied for the job. And then I remember him telling the story that what was the big deal? He got the job, by the way. But that's not a big deal as far as he was concerned. Got the job, spent about four months there, resigned, and went to school. He graduates next year. And today is a role model where he lives. Simple technology. But the big deal for him wasn't the fact that, oh, I got the job. It was the fact that he sent a car without a red CD, called Diplomatique, plate number to his house, picked him up, took him to the airport. He got on a plane. And I could understand. <laughs> Many of you won't because you've always been flying. 2001, November 12th. You can never forget those dates. It was the first time I sat inside an airplane. Before then, I used to sing this song. Many of you wouldn't know. Aeroplane, he told me, Lord. <laughs> oh, you know the song? <laughs> that's, that's, that's special. We need to do the remix. Okay? Um, where, where, where are the guys who deal with music? Please, please, sign out on to my label. <laughs> you know... One of the interesting stories I also tell is a story of a young man who had no job and would sit at home with his friend every day and they would be asking questions. Oh, boy, what's he going to do now? What's he going to do now? We know if he's still. Then one of those days, something interesting happened. The town crier came around and said, oh, by the way, the king's daughter needs to be given away in marriage. And the man who will marry the king's daughter had to do only one thing. Swim through this river, infested with nice crocodiles, fierce snakes, and many things. And everybody, of course, everybody was curious who was going to do this. So they got to the riverside, not because of, of course, who was going to jump. I mean, if I know my wife is in the audience, but honestly, um, if I was told to jump, okay, let me look away. <laughs> if I was told to jump into this river, honey, I will jump. I'm not sure I will jump. <laughs> So they all got that edge of the river. The crocodiles kind of said, welcome. And suddenly, they heard a splash. And then some guy called Adio got to the other side. Like, what on earth? Everybody was like, wow, Adio, Adio, go Adio, go Adio. And then they got to the other side and said to him, oh my God. So the king came around, sat on his throne, sat up around there and said, oh, uh, brave man, you have not just my daughter, but my daughter and half my kingdom. But Adio couldn't talk. <laughs> when he came back to himself, he said one phrase. Who paid me? <laughs> what we want to achieve with Tenta Great Affair is to push computer science students, beginning with them, in their first year, into crocodile-infested waters. Where by the time they emerge, they own half your purse. Because you will pay for the product they will bring to you. I'm tired of seeing CVs. I want to see business plans and businesses. And guess what? It starts this Monday in this same school. Thank you for having me.